Hello, so once again this video is sponsored by Autodesk and what I want to do is um, I've got this character here that's um, hang on, it's not the origin so it's a bit annoying but um, this one here and it has some animation on it like that just some talking and what I want to do is transfer that movement over to this other mesh, which is, uh, hold on, let me hide all the rest. Uh, this one here. So he's just static, he's just a static mesh. And he's got movement on him. Now, if I put him back to his original position, so um, I've moved him over there so um i just want to stick him back to zero. Oh, hang on why is he why is he gone like that okay oops okay i was doing it on the wrong bit okay so what i'm going to do is use the closest thing closest position to be able to swap this over to that now if i do that as a, these are topologically completely different these objects so you know i can't use the points directly what i'm going to do do is get a sort of closest position um from one to the other i can't do it directly on this one because he's he's moving and it would constantly change the closest position would change i need to be able to lock the points of this one to this one so if i just hide those two now this can get quite confusing i've got a static version of him which doesn't move and i have a start pose of the other one which doesn't move obviously and these are sort of in equivalent expressions. Oops, hang on, sorry. Um, expressions on their face, but they aren't in the same place. So I have this one here who uh, is in the same position as this one here, roughly. I mean, the. They're sort of aligned rough, you know, roughly, but sort of close enough so that one point, one, you know, the points of this one could read the closest position of this and it will kind of make some sort of sense. So I've warped it so that the eyes are sort of roughly in the same place and all that sort of thing. So we're going to use these two to transfer the data over from the moving mesh, which isn't this one, but it's topologically the same as the moving one. And that one is here. Uh, hang on. Here, <laughs> okay. So hopefully this will become a bit more apparent as I do it. Basically, I've got some proxy meshes um, which I'm going to use to tra to transfer the movement over from one to another. So first of all, the first stage is to get the movement vectors. Unfortunately, these are a bit sort of misaligned at the moment. These two, but it doesn't really matter. Um, so we've got the moving one here, and we've got the static one there. Okay. Just hide that and just show that static and that one's moving. And the static one is in that pose of the mouth shut. Um, I can't use that one with the mouth shut as a thing to swap it across because the lips are so close together, it wouldn't be very clear. And that's why these ones which I've made that to fit each other have the mouths open so it's a bit more clear. Okay, right, so let's hide that. And let's bring up again the moving one. Uh, Oops, hang on a second, why am I not seeing that? Okay, moving one and the, oh, hang on a minute, what have I done? It's like I've deleted stuff. Okay, uh, moving one and the static one. So let's just hide everything else, hide that. Hide that. Hide that. Show the moving one. Sorry, hide uh, that. Okay, we've got the moving one there, this and the static one there. Okay. So, we get the moving one and the static one. And the first thing we want to do is get their point positions. Get point positions of that one and that one. And if we subtract one from the other, that will basically give us some vectors and I can show those in a second. So let's set point position. Uh, no, not set point position. 
Well, let's do nothing to it at the moment. Let's just output it as an output. And here I should be able to draw vector, which is a little node thing that I made just to sort of look at, at this. So we'll draw it on the static shape and hopefully you can see there the vectors they just basically show the difference between one and the other you can see them sort of moving around okay so those are the vectors um i think actually i've got those the wrong way around well it doesn't matter anyway i haven't um they're fine okay so Okay, we don't need that draw vector stuff. That was just to prove that there are some moving vectors going on there. Let's just delete that and we'll delete that. And what we want to do is set that as a property. So we do set geo property and we'll set it. So the output there goes into the data. Default, we just change to make sure it's, well, it is a float three, so that's fine. But we don't want to set it on this geometry we want to set it on one that's topologically identical, but that we can swap over the data. So that's that fit one. So if I show that fit one there, we want to set that data onto this object so that then we can get the other fit one, this one. And, you know, I, I call them fit because they fit each other. So that one there is going to pull the data over from the other fit one. Yeah, so we're setting it on the fit um okay so out this out geometry now has the um if i just show do it add watch point you can see now it has and oh, no, it hasn't sorry because i need to type it in on here hold on let me just uh go on there and i need to type in that property and we'll call it move okay so now here it's got that move um property which i've just set on the object okay so now that's something which we can get the closest location of. And we want to use this one, this the other fit pose, the one that's next to it, to be able to get the closest position of that, this one now, which has that those movement vectors on it. So this one here is called character fit pose. And we would do get closest locations of this one. And we looking closest locations are looking from the point position of this one. I just copy and paste that. I just do that because I'm lazy and I can bother to do tab. So we're looking from the point positions of that one and we're getting the closest locations of the fit shape, this one. And the um, property that we want to get, we do by sample, sorry about my squeaky chair, sample property. Um, it's because I'm getting nervous and shifting around. <laughs> um, Okay, and so we're sampling the property still of this object here, and the property we want to get is a vector three. So we do value types, vector well, float three, it's the same thing. Um, and the property we want to get down here is move. Right, so now we've got those movement vectors, and they are on this, um, uh, now they're on this fit pose shape. But actually, we don't want to set it on this one. We want to set it in the equivalent, the one that's the equivalent of the static pose of this one. So let's just go have a look at that again. We've got that static one. And I've made this one here, which is in a similar pose to that one. Okay. So we want to set that because now these points are now, you know, th these locations are now on, they're looking you know, the, the, the object which looked at it is this, this, this character here. And so we can use any mesh that's topologically identical to that. So this was the actual one we used, the fit pose, which was looking, but we can set it on this one because it's topologically the same. It's got the same sort of point order and everything like that. So this sample data we can set on. So we get this start pose, which is that one there. And we can set it onto, onto this one. So what we want to do is get point positions of this one. So get point positions there. 
and add it add those sort of delta offset ones to that and then set point position of that one and let's just see what that does now where's our biff object okay so let's see what happens now there you go Let's just hide that other one that was. Let's just delete that, in fact. Well, that doesn't matter. Um, so let's move him to one side and hide that one. And that's our static one. We don't want to see that. So it's a bit confusing with all these heads. Um, so they're completely topologically different, but I'm using a you know a system to swap the movement over from that one to that one so let's see again you know I, I've sort of roughly stuck them together so they're not going to be perfect um, but you know it's not done a bad job of it considering everything considering sort of you know that they're only sort of roughly lined up um, the animation goes on for a bit longer than that. Not that it's not nothing particularly amazing about it. But um, yeah. So, you know, it just shows again that, you know, Bifrost is sort of a useful tool for generally swapping stuff across from one mesh to another and, um, you know, designing your own, own tools to be able to custom do that. You could also, you know, if you wanted to, because this, all this is just data flowing through, you could, you know, you could. Um, paint weight maps to sort of say transfer it more here because you can multi you could do a weight map and you can multiply the amount by two or you could you know halve it or whatever you wanted and control it in that sort of way but anyway i just thought that was like a nice little um thing i know it's confusing with all these different meshes and swapping ones across from other but it it sort of shows that you know this is just data and if the data you know the sort of context down here of this one is, you know, the point positions on this one fit this one, you know, they're the same. But when you start getting into closest locations, it can swap it over to meshes which are completely topologically different. And it's just, it's just looking at the nearest spot on the object and saying, what sample, you know, what property do you want to sample? And as long as you've set the property, um, you know, which you do with this set geo property thing, then you can read it across from from another mesh. Uh, again, you know, like this is a tool which, if you wanted to use this more than once, you'd have this all set up. So you'd go, you know, these are your input ones, and you know, this would be a compound. You know, you'd have this as a as a thing. Um, you know, but I I feel like I have to say that every time because I know people just think that it's a confusing and convoluted workflow but again I'm making the tool so it's you know it's uh, I think considering the fact you're making a tool from scratch it's actually a very fast workflow but yeah anyway I just thought I'd show that off okay thank you bye